It's official now. Xi Jinping is China's new president. Delegates to this year's National Party Congress will elect the rest of the government today. For details, we go straight to Beijing, where our correspondent Guang Xin is standing by. Well, Xi Jinping assumed Chinese presidency on Thursday, ending a once-in-a-decade leadership transition that began at last November's Communist Party Congress when delegates elected him as a, as a general secretary of the Communist Party of China and chairman of the Central Military Commission. And in less than 30 minutes from now, the National People's Congress, China's top legislature, will also elect China's premier and other high-ranking officials, including heads of the Supreme People's Court and the Procurator General, China's counterpart to the U.S. Attorney General. And China's new government faces many challenges. In the inherited economy that grew at 7.8 percent young year is the weakest level since 1999. And latest economic data from China also shows both industrial production and retail sales grew less than expected, creating uncertainties for the years ahead. And another big challenge is that the new leadership team will continue efforts to shift the world's second largest economy from one relying on investment and exports to one driven by domestic consumption, a strategy designed to keep the China on track for stable and sustainable development over the long term. She won't address this year's con uh, National People's Congress until the closing session on Sunday, but based on his actions in the past few months, we can expect he will make reforms among his top priorities. Back to you, Phil. All right, from Beijing, Guangxin, thank you very much. For more on China's new leaders, Hank Levine, senior director of the Albright Stonebridge Group, joins us here in the studio. And also we have Steve Orleans, president of the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations, joining us from New York. Um, Steve, let's start with you. There's a lot to talk about, but let's talk about where we are today first. Where is the relationship between the United States and China after all the politics has been concluded somewhat? Well, I think with the new leadership, we saw President Obama phone uh, now new President Xi today and have a very positive and constructive relation uh, discussion about the whole range of issues in the relationship. So I think that's a symptom of how there are problems at the margins of the relationship, but the fundamentals are very good. Hank. I should say hello to my good friend Hank. All right, I'm, I'm, there. I'm sure he <laughs> would like to say hi back. And you know, Steve brings up a good point. The president, President Obama, and President Xi. This is not obviously the first time they've spoken. They've had a working dialogue uh, well before this point today. Do you think that will help further the relationship and perhaps help build the core of that relationship, which may or may not have been there because of politics, maybe on both sides? I think that the personal relationships uh, certainly are important, and particularly at the highest levels, if two leaders can connect with each other, uh, speak frankly to each other, and, and share some similar visions, I think it's tremendously important. That said, you know, policy decisions that have to be made in each country are tough decisions, and there are lots of internal uh, political pressures and, and interest groups and so on. So while the personal relationships are tremendously important, that can't alone deliver the what, kind of progress. What tops the agenda for both leaders, you think? What's the number one priority for both of them? Well, uh, in, in, from, from the economic side of the relationship, to focus on that for a moment, I think that from the U.S. side, the concern has been that over the, in recent years, under the previous leadership, the process of economic reform and opening seems to have slowed or, or even come to a halt in China. Uh, so I think there's a, a growing sense that, that uh, China needs to revive the process of reform and opening, remove obstacles for, for foreign companies, uh, remove, uh, have the Chinese government do less in terms of managing the company. So in terms of the economic relationship, I'd say that's a priority on the U.S. side. Steve. Um yeah, on the political side, I, I would say it was clear that North Korea is the highest priority that I'm sure President Obama urged President Xi. First, I'm sure he said thank you for cooperation we had with the Chinese on imposing additional sanctions through the UN Secure through a UN Security Council resolution. And I'm sure he urged him to take stronger actions to bring North Korea into conformity with UN resolutions. The relationship between the United States and China has been um, a complicated one, I think, for lack of a better word. I mean, you have politics, obviously. You have issues dealing with the United Nations. You brought some of that up earlier. But you also have the economics of it all. I mean, the United States would say that uh, they're very much a partner with China, but there's also criticism out there as well. What can President Xi do to alleviate some of the concerns, especially from some of the more 
uh, vocal lawmakers in the United States? Well, certainly taking efforts to have greater protection of intellectual property would be number one on my list, a list of things that President Xi could do. There have been a lot of promises, but I think it's the number one concern of U.S. businesses. Today, clearly doing something in a cooperative manner on cybersecurity is critical because cybersecurity has just flown to the top of the list of concerns of U.S. businesses. Hank, you heard some of those concerns there and some of the issues. I mean, do you agree those should be the top issues with respect to the economy that perhaps China could or should focus on? Yeah, I certainly agree that the cyber issue uh, has, has now crossed the line from simply being a, a narrower national security issue to one uh, that has, has, has come to the top of the agenda, including among the business community, which feels uh, that it's uh, frequently the target of, of efforts to steal commercial information. And of course, as we saw, this was one of the topics that uh, the two presidents spoke about. So certainly the cyber issue is right up there, uh, and that's a part of the intellectual property issue. Again, as I say also, I think there's a broad question about will the new leadership in China uh, pursue a very aggressive revival of reform and opening. There was some uh, expectations raised uh, when Xi Jinping made his first trip to Shenzhen uh, after being named uh, party uh, secretary general. Uh, and I think we just need to see how that's going to play out. But that would be important. Gentlemen, both leaders are now in place. It'll be interesting to see what happens over the course of 2013 and beyond. Hank Levine, Steve Orleans, thank you very much for joining us on this topic.